In July 1908, directors of the White Star Line were presented with a set of plans for a pair of ships, the likes of which had never before been seen. This concept was known simply as Design D, and it would go on to lay out what would become the Olympic and the Titanic. Today we're going to have a look at the original concept, we're going to have a look at what changed, what stayed the same, and finally, what Titanic would have looked like if she had been finished as originally planned back in 1908. This is the story of Design D, the original concept of the Titanic. First, some background history. The White Star Line had cut its teeth on the England to Australia run, but by the turn of the 20th century was making serious profit on the transatlantic trade. In 1899, the company's long-standing head, Thomas Ismay, passed away, and his son, J. Bruce Ismay, succeeded him. After success with a group of ships known as the Big Four, the Celtic, Cedric, Baltic and Adriatic, White Star Line faced a serious threat when competitors Cunard began construction on a pair of massive, luxurious ocean liners, Lusitania and Mauritania. Our story begins in 1907, months before Lusitania's maiden voyage, when J. Bruce Ismay and Lord William Peary, chairman of the Highland Wolf Shipyard of Belfast, discussed plans to introduce a pair of ships that would completely outsize the Cunard offering. In April that year, the White Star Line placed a formal request that Highland and Wolf begin drawing up plans for a pair of superliners. And just over a year later, in July 1908, a party of directors from the White Star Line were presented with Design D. This called for a pair of huge ships known simply as numbers 400 and 401, Olympic and Titanic. A quick note here, this representation of the Design D plan was digitally drawn by a friend of Liner Designs, Victor Villa. Victor is the founder of the Brazilian Titanic Historical Society. And Victor, thank you very much for providing these beautiful drawings. Right, now you're probably thinking, these look fairly similar to the finished ships, and you're right. The basic layout stayed almost the same but there are a few key differences between what was outlined in 1908 and the finished ships that were built and launched just a few years later. Let's have a look at some. First of all, you may have noticed that the ship is missing a mast. This is not a mistake. Originally, Titanic and Olympic were intended to carry just one. By 1908, the age of sail was all but dead, and ships carrying masts, spars, and rigging were well out of date. The Olympic class's yacht-like lines were supposed to be enhanced and accentuated by the presence of only one functional mast. Legend says that Bruce Ismay was so impressed by the effect of two masts on the likes of Lusitania and Mauritania that he requested one more be added aft. But the masts also served an important purpose. They provided the span from which the Marconi wireless aerials could be attached, thus giving Olympic and Titanic their voices. It's not entirely clear how the aerials might have been installed without the use of a second mast. Maybe between the first and second funnel, albeit with a vastly reduced wireless range. Who knows? Another big difference here was in the proposed installation of lifeboats. As called for on Design D, Olympic and Titanic were to have 14 boats and two cutters, clumped together on the boat deck just about amidships down. You can see just how cluttered this would have made the first and second class promenades if left. Of course, on the final design, the group of boats was split into two. On top of this, and most importantly, Olympic and Titanic's lifeboat capacity was slightly increased when compared to that of the Design D. Looking aft, you might notice some big changes. The entire structure around the second class smoking room didn't yet exist. A single cargo hatch ran into the bottom of the ship and with no mainmast, the extra deck space could have been used for a larger open second class promenade. Instead, on the final design, the cargo hatch was split into two, either side of a vital set of stairs linking key second class public rooms. Also, Olympic and Titanic's familiar aft superstructure was implemented, including space for the mainmast. Moving to the boat deck, and we can see that originally the first class smoking room was supposed to have a skylight. This might have been inspired by the smoking room aboard Lusitania, although, unfortunately, the skylight was deleted on the final design. Just forward of this on the boat deck is the tank room, which originally called for a deck house attached aft containing the officer's mess. This is because, originally, the ship's grand staircases were intended to be far less grand than we know them today. The aft grand staircase was originally not intended to receive a dome skylight at all, and Design D just shows how sparse the stairs would have looked, similar maybe to those aboard Baltic or the Big Four. Another key difference was down on B Deck. Originally, there was no intention to include an a la carte restaurant and Café Parisien. These were later additions intended to give Olympic and Titanic a luxurious edge. The deck's outboard sides would have been entirely enclosed promenades split between first and second class. 
Finally, a curious design change that was reversed for the third and final ship, Britannic. Design D outlines space for the first class elevators. These would have originally risen all the way up to the boat deck. This necessitated a structure on top of the officers' quarters to house the large elevator machinery. For Olympic and Titanic, the plan was scrapped. The machinery was housed on the boat deck, meaning that the ship's elevators could only make it up to A deck. But for the Britannic, the original concept was reintroduced, and her machinery was housed above so that the elevators could make it all the way up to boat deck. Design D laid the foundation for the ships we know and love today, and although fundamentally similar, there were a few key differences more than I've mentioned in today's video. Victor's stunning, massive recreation of the Design D plan is available at www.linerdesigns.com. I've made these available in both 1350 and 1200 scales, and these look spectacular as part of a model display or simply in your study. So go have a look and see if you can pick out a few more differences that I didn't mention in today's video. I'll give you a quick hint. There was one big one down on D-Deck. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Please comment, subscribe, let me know what you thought of the video, and let me know what you think of the original design concept. I'll see you again next time. <clears throat> Let's do it. After success with the big four, Cedric, Celtic, hmm. wrong order, nice one. <clears throat>